just made me glad. It's in your books in there if you want to read it. If you're not, stand up and sing with it. He just made me glad. Here we go. page 133. of faith this morning is the Apostles' Creed found in your bulletin. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under the promise of Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. To the third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sit at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From this he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning. Welcome to Mount Zion United Methodist Church. Do so we have any first-time guests with us this morning? If so, please raise your hand. I think I saw any. So welcome to everybody here with us this morning, and welcome to those of you attending virtually as well. Nice to have you with us this morning also. Let me direct your attention to the flowers. The flowers are to the glory of God and in memory of Rosa Lanham, placed on her birthday with love from Harold, Kathy, and the family. And thank you very much for the flowers this morning. Any announcements? 
Okay, so today after church, I hope you brought your water clothes so that you can go down the slip and slide. Um, also, there will be hot dogs afterwards. So we have, we'll have those ready, get a hot dog, have fun on the slip and slide for the end of summer slip and slide shindig. Okay, now, next on my list is September 18th, which is Andy's Hoot Me. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I like wing ding, but you know, now I'm going with Hoot Nanny. So September 18th, if you don't already have that on your calendar, please get that on there as we celebrate his 40 years. Thank you. Slip and slide immediately following the service this morning, so please come over for that. And then September 18th, uh, to honor our choir director of 40 years. Please put that on your calendar. Uh, reminder of the council meeting next Sunday morning at 9 in the fellowship hall. Next Sunday morning at 9 o'clock in the fellowship hall for the administrative council <coughs> meeting. So please come out for that. Yes, ma'am. Carol. Um, good morning. The, our pantry is the closest to the Carol, please continue to bring in snacks for the food pantry and then um, items for the hygiene kits as well. Uh, we are, uh, that's a great ministry that we have here. We want to make sure that we have the supplies to be able to continue it. So thank you very much. Jake. Next Sunday, uh, we're having our youth camp here. Uh, it's middle school and high school, so 6th through 12th grade. You're invited. We're starting the day off with donuts at 10 a.m. And really, what could go wrong from there? Yeah. Uh, so donuts at 10 a.m. Uh, we've got lunch. Uh, it'll be pizza. And it'll be done around 2 o'clock. We've got a uh, worship band. AJ and the band are coming. They're bringing the whole set. Um, and they're gonna, uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. So we're going to finish with that. Josh and Rosa are doing recreation. Rosa's actually coming back from Nicaragua just to do recreation. <laughs> That's how big the camp is here. So I'm looking forward to that. So a lot of times. So please uh, bring a friend. We will need everyone just to fill out a form. So uh, encouraging all the youth, kids, middle school, high school uh, to come bring a friend or 10. Uh, we will feed them. Uh, plenty of places to sit over there. Uh, but next week, 10 a.m. till about 2. Parents probably just kind of hang around uh, in the afternoon. You're welcome to, you know, sit nearby. Uh, and then we'll be done at 2 so you can do what you need to in the afternoon. But thank you very much. Youth camp next Sunday, 6th through 12th grade. So please come out for that starting at 10 o'clock with donuts. And lunch will be provided for that group as well. So uh, please come out for that 10 to 2. Other announcements? about prayer concerns or praises? Yeah. Uh, pray for Rosa and her family, and she's coming home Tuesday, so pray that that goes smoothly. <laughs> Continue to put uh, Rosa and her fam family on the prayer list, and then a praise that she's, uh, she'll be back with us soon. Yep. Our son-in-law, Luke, Luke <coughs> is in Texas fighting fire for the next Luke Lynn. Oh. Alan? Linda Meyer and Trudy Wallace. Linda Meyer and Trudy Wallace. Yes, ma'am. Brenda, Brenda Glover. Yes, in the back. Joanne Delmar. Joanne Delmar. The Lockhart family. The Lockhart family. And Joe. Beverly Upchurch. Beverly Upchurch. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Marsha.
put DJ on there and Steve Lamb. Ms. Carter? Yes, ma'am. Any others, Brian? Hornsby and O'Neill families. Hornsby and O'Neill families. Cassie Rapko and her family. Cassie Rapko and Rapko family. Matt? I've got a co Tracy Inman, the Inman family. Yes. Trisha Riley is having a procedure on August 26th. Trisha Riley. Sean Flynn. Sean Flynn. Any others? there for that and uh, you're doing a lot to take care of others so we'll put you on there for that as well thank you marcia if there are no more we'll take these lord in prayer let us pray god this week's been a lot it's just been a lot god we have so many concerns on our hearts we have so many people to lift to you, asking you to help, oh God, to help, to step in and do what you do best, to comfort us, to heal us, to give us a peace that passes all understanding. God, be with these who we have lifted to you this morning and those who have requested prayers for them. Allow us to be agents of your grace and comfort and healing. We can't ask anything else, oh God. This is the ministry you have given to us. To be your people, your hands and feet in this world that needs you so much. We ask all of these things in your son's name who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. singing on page 337 only trust him page 337 please stand
as I invite the ushers to come forward for our offering time. <coughs> Here I am to say thank you again for the ways that you serve this church and you give back to it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, we had a, a great gathering in, in, in the gathering this morning, and uh, I was reminded as I saw all the kids playing up front of the way that this church loves its children, and I'm so happy to, to see that and to see you giving back to them. And thank you for doing that. Thank you for su supporting the present church and the future church. Let us pray now as we go to God and give back. Oh God, we are reminded of the parable of the fish and the loaves, that you can do so much with so little. Oh God, multiply these gifts and your tithes this morning, that we might be able to better serve you and your kingdom in this community and around the world. We love you, God. In your son's holy and precious name we pray. Amen. reading this morning comes from the book of Luke chapter 12 verses 49 through 56 on page 75 in the New Testament of your pew Bible. I came to bring fire to the earth and how I wish it were already kindled. I have a baptism with which to be baptized and what stress I am under until it is completed. Do you think that I have come to bring peace to the earth? No I tell you but rather division. From now on five and one household will be divided three against two, and two against three. They will be divided. Father against son, and son against father. Mother against daughter, and daughter against mother. Mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law, and daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. He also said to the crowds, when you see a cloud rising in the west, you immediately say, it is going to rain, and so it happens. And when you see the south wind blowing, you say, there will be scorching heat, and it happens. You hypocrites. You know how to interpret the appearance of earth and sky, but why do you not know how to interpret the present time? The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. At this time, I'd like for the children to come down for the children's message.
I don't know. Vanilla ice cream is the best. I want you to stand on that side of the line. Wow, I would never have thought that. <laughs> Nobody likes <laughs> <to try. laughs> Who else helps with hip hop? Anybody help with hip hop? 
Thanks, Carol. This time we ask uh, y'all are allowed to stand up yeah. and go greet your neighbor and tell them God loves you. <laughs>
just a couple of words of warning. Uh, I have no idea how long my voice is going to hold out. My daughter was kind enough to go to preschool uh, for the first time in two weeks uh, this last week and brought home a preschool cold. Yeah. And uh, don't worry, it's not COVID. I would not be here if it were. Uh, but we tested and we're negative, thank God. Uh, but. Uh, so that's thing number one. Thing number two is we're having technical difficulties on this screen. Uh, and so we'll see. It hasn't caused any noticeable problems yet, but I've been fighting with it back here. Uh, we'll see. What a, uh, what a gospel passage this morning, huh? <laughs> Thank you for answering back. Do you see what I mean when I'm talking about having a little bit of a bone to pick with the revised com common lectionary? I mean, uh, first we're talking about money in my first month, and now this, now this. Uh, the, good, uh, the good news is what the gospel means in Greek. It's the word euangelion. And so I was looking at the, the, the gospel this week and struggled to find any good news. Did y'all hear any good news in that? Hold on, I've got a Bible. Let me, let me turn to it. Luke chapter 12, verse 49, okay, here it is, let me look, and divisions, fire, divisions, family divisions, uh, hypocrites, and, oh, no, I, no, no good news immediately visible here, uh, what's going on, Jesus? Uh, there was a commentator who was, uh, who was writing about this passage in a preaching uh, commentary, and he, she said, uh, she basically said this, it's like walking into, preaching on this passage, it's like walking into a teenager's room that has this sign, caution, enter at your own risk on the door. A not so subtle way to, to say, uh, you might want to choose a different passage to preach on. Now, I, I'm not sure about you, but I don't think the world has ever had any problems forming divisions. And we certainly uh, are no uh, exception to that rule in this day and age. So I disagree a little bit with the commentator. If there's ever been a more appropriate text for right now, I'd sure like to hear it. In our context, it is clear that divisions have taken over this country, our world, our neighborhoods, in new and I'd say dangerous ways. Now, I don't know if we're more divided now than we've ever been at any point in our history in the, in the country. I don't, I don't think I would make that claim because we're not at, actively at civil war yet with each other. We're not killing each other. But this has got to be one of the most divided times in our hit nation's history, right? If you look at our media, that's for sure, right? Fox News, CNN, MSNBC, Wall Street Journal, New York Times, whatever you read, whatever you watch, whatever your media outlet is, uh, they portray us as a nation, as the world, as not being able to get along with each other because of our divisions. I don't think that's necessarily always an accurate representation of who we are as a country or as a people of God. I think we can agree on at least 80% of things. <laughs> that might be cynical, that might be cynical. I think it's probably more. I think we actually agree on way more than we disagree on. But when we focus on our disagreements, that's when we get to divisions, right? when we focus on the things that we disagree upon instead of what we actually do agree on, that's when we get to divisions. We might disagree, for example, on who has the best chicken sandwich. <laughs> you might like Chick-fil-A, pictured to the left. Your neighbors sitting next to you might like Popeyes. You can likely still call that 
person sitting next to you who might disagree with you or agree with you, a sibling in Christ, right? Your, your brother or sister in Christ. We're not to the point of division yet, even though we might disagree and have different taste preferences. Marsha, even though you may not like rap, I don't think that we're divided yet over that, right? I can still call you a sibling in Christ, even if it's not your preference. No one in their right mind is letting a chicken sandwich be the grounds for their divorce. Now, if you feel that passionately about your chicken sandwich, I would invite you to come see me in my office after worship, and we're going to channel that passion into being a better disciple of Jesus Christ. We can disagree without being divided, but when we make our disagreements our focus, that's when there is no other course but division. I think our attention is probably naturally drawn this morning to the family relationships, right? Father against son, et cetera. I don't need to go and list them. One commentator noted that family relationships that Jesus brings up here, saying that he came to divide, not to unite, are ones in which there's obligation involved. Y'all know about family obligations? <laughs> I know about family obligations. Do you have in-laws? You have family obligations. I love my in-laws. Uh, they're great. Uh, but no matter whether you love them or not, you have family obligations. When someone's married, for example, you get up and go to the wedding wherever it is, right? If you have the resources, if you can at all, you go to the wedding. If someone is dying and on their deathbed, you go and, and see grandma or grandpa one last time. That's what Cassie was doing this week, uh, only to find out that her grandma was not actually on her deathbed. Uh, she's got a little bit more time with us in this world. But what a feeling, right? What a feeling to go find out that, oof, what a mess. When your dad asks you to do something, to mow the lawn, to fix your room up so that you can stand to look at it, right? You, you, you tend to want to do what dad asks you to do. You want to, do, if you're a father, or if you're leaving an inheritance to your children. You want to follow the obligation to divide your inheritance up if there is one. Y'all, I'm not sure that there's not, there's going to be much inheritance for Jordan, but, uh, but I want to, if we have more than one child, I want to be fair to my children as much as possible. Now, there are circumstances, right? Of course, there's always circumstances, but we try to be to follow our dutiful obligations to each other. It's, it's what sustains the basic unit of the family, right? This sense of obligation, and of course love too, hopefully. <laughs> but the obligation's there. Uh, my wife's grandmother died, the other grandmother died at the beginning of 2022, so Cassie's been going through it. Um, but it was in the month of, I think early in February, and this is uh, in Northeast Ohio near Cleveland uh, where the funeral was being held. Uh, 18 inches of snow, 18 inches. I know of no other reason but family obligations and duty to make me want to go to Cleveland, Ohio to go through 18 inches of snow. I am not a snow driver. And the sense of duty isn't a bad thing, right? It's often a good thing. A very good thing. It upholds our social order. It causes us to do the right thing most of the time. But what Jesus is saying here is that the kingdom of God is something radically different than obligation. It overrides and overturns and it goes flip mode. Y'all know this phrase, flip mode? Busta Rhymes, a, a rapper of my youth, uh, had a squad called Flip Mode. It's one of my favorite ways to describe what Jesus does. He turns everything over on its head. That is the theme of Luke, the Gospel of Luke in a nutshell. Flip Mode. Flip Mode's the greatest. 
It cuts through this kingdom of God, the way of doing things that Jesus prescribes, cuts through every little bit of the way that we do life together. Everything. Down to the most important relationships in our lives. And if you're not ready for God to take over in that kind of way, then Jesus is talking to you this morning. Have you ever noticed that family is not restful a lot? When you go to visit family, it's not rest. It's, uh, it's work a lot. Especially if you have characters in your family. Y'all have characters in your family? <laughs> I have some characters in my family. Uh, it's hard for me to sit down at the table sometimes with some of these characters. This is my great aunt, Juanita. She's uh, gone on to be with God. Uh, I remember when we were growing up, I remember knock down, drag out arguments about anything you could imagine on Wednesday night suppers right before we went to church. I mean, school vouchers, I don't know. Uh, we would disagree on everything and go at it in ways that I think my grandmother and my grandfather wished that I would just shut up. <laughs> I was a high schooler, so I knew everything in the world, right? If I saw her today, I'd apologize to her for my tone. Maybe not for some of the arguments that I made, because I think I'm still right. <laughs> Family often is not restful. Most of the time, it's not. Going to see in-laws in, in a marriage, for example, is not restful. It might be good to spend time, especially if they're grandparents, especially if there's grandchildren to act as a buffer. That's great. But your in-laws, if you have them, are folks who enter your, into your life through no choice of your own other than the, the, the fact that you love the one you are with. No matter how much we like them, this is a relationship formed by duty and hardly ever involves restfulness. It's work. And good work. It's important work. It's, but it's work. Cassie and I have uh, all lived, this, we, all of our relatives have lived decently far away. Uh, here we are in Atlanta, the big one in the middle. Uh, our closest relatives are in Cincinnati, uh, Batavia, actually. And then uh, Cassie's dad and his wife live in uh, Terre Haute, Indiana. And that's my family all the way down in, in Miami, Florida, Fort Lauderdale, actually. Ten hours away on a, a good drive. Uh, the flight's a little easier. So no one lives too close to each other. Uh, which has forced us to develop what we like to call chosen family. Are y'all familiar with this term, chosen family? Do y'all have some chosen family? I hope so. I love my chosen family. One of my best childhood friends uh, lives in Atlanta, Austin. He's a godparent to my, my daughter, and uh, his wife is godmother. They're the best. We love them. Good seminary friend, uh, still lives in Atlanta, is a pastor in Marietta right now. She just moved appointments, but she lives in Stone Mountain. Great friend, Cassie's best friend, besides me, hopefully. <laughs> Another couple uh, from Avondale are good friends and will watch Jordan for us, and their daughter is a babysitter for us, and we met them on our trip to Israel, and they just became great friends to us. Another clergy person, a, a, a current district superintendent, Susan Landry, and her husband, uh, Lewis, are great friends. They are just some of the best people I know. They love my daughter like a, a granddaughter. They don't have, well, I think they do have grandchildren. But they love her like a granddaughter anyway. Our conference benefits officer and her husband are babysitters and, and, and good, good friends. Y'all, we love our chosen family. And if you don't have that support system, God, I would love to help you develop one. We entered into those relationships, though, that free from any duty. We genuinely want to be with these people. And we share life together. They are our chosen family. They are surrogate family. We entered into these relationships free. And we want to invest in them. And they take away the sting of being so apart from our blood family just a little bit more. I think Jesus had something in mind when it comes to the kingdom of God. 
that is similar to that, to chosen family. Relationships that are free from obligation, where we enter into them freely out of the love of each other. Sometimes duty does t- rear its head in the church. Y'all, uh, sometimes duty is part of our relationships together, but more often than not, I think God wants us to have those kinds of free from obligation relationships. When he talks about coming to divide, it's not the vision for the sake of being divided. When he talks about burning up the world, he's not talking about destroying the world. He's talking about purifying it. That's one use of fire, right? One use is to destroy. And so we see a lot of destruction. I imagine in Texas there's going to be a lot of that going on, right? So fire can destroy, but fire can actually purify as well, right? The same wildfires that might be happening in Texas. Wildfires can also purify an environment and are a natural part of what goes on to sustain an entire ecosystem. Fire can cleanse in a good way when it's prescribed and controlled, right? I think that's what Jesus is talking about. I don't, I, I don't believe in the Jesus who is coming to destroy us all. I hope you don't either. When we're free from the obligations and duty of even our closest relationships, when we love the other person so much that there's duty involved, right? When we exit those kind of duty-bound relationships, then we are truly free. And liberation is actually one of the biggest parts of what salvation is. Christ truly died so that we could be set free from anything. And hear me when I say this, I mean it. Anything that might detract from God's mission to establish the kingdom of God here in this world. Anything that might detract our attention from that purpose. Jesus wants to burn up, to purify us, to make us free. Free for the purpose of God's kingdom. We acknowledge, I don't know if you know this, the goal of liberation, the end of liberation. Uh, the Greek word is telos. It's the, the goal that we reach, right? Liberation is the end goal. When we say our communion prayer in our confession, we say these words. Remind me, this, sounds, uh, this is sound familiar. Free us for joyful obedience. Mm. When we talk about freedom of will, we're not talking about freedom to do whatever we want. That's called something called uh, libertarian free will. Uh, libertarian free will is the freedom to do something, to go to your favorite uh, chicken sandwich uh, store of choice, or not to do something, to abstain from going to Chick-fil-A or Popeyes or wherever it is you like your chicken from. That's libertarian free will. You can do or you can not. When we talk about free will, In the church, it's historically meant something different. It's better to probably say freed will rather than free will. When we talk about our will being freed, it's when Jesus steps in through grace and removes those tendencies, the bent to sinning that we sing about in some of our songs. The things that detract from God's mission the things that detract from our attention being fully devoted to God's kingdom. That's what we're talking about when we're talking about free will. It's always been a freedom for joyful obedience to God, for us to want to do God's will. That's what we're talking about. When we truly have free will, we are free to use our will how God originally intended us to use it in service to God and God's kingdom. We're free to joyfully obey. One of my favorite comedy movies of all time is Office Space. Y'all know this movie? It's a cult classic. It's a, it's a funny one. 
Uh, it's full of, I would just say, I guess, rage against the expectations of the office life, lifestyle, right? One of my favorite characters is Milton, uh, who takes a lot of abuse in the office. First, uh, they actually fire him without him knowing. He continues to work without pay. Um, it's just great. He gets skipped over for birthday cake when they celebrate birthdays in the office. And finally, finally, they take his stapler. <laughs> that is when he decides to burn the entire office building down. Now, the spoiler statute of limitations is up on this movie, and so I don't mind telling you that, um, <laughs> that what, that's what happens. He burns down the office building. And so the movie, the main characters in the movie are set free from their office that is just dragging them down into the earth into a pit of despair. They hate their office. <laughs> they hate their job. And so the fire actually sets them free. No one's hurt in it. Just the company property is lost. And I think that this is something similar to what Jesus has in mind for us this morning. He's not yearning for the world to be destroyed, but for the world to be purified. Jesus is talking about all the things that would distract us from God's mission in this world. We understand God's mission in this world to be making disciples for the transformation of the world. That's our mission in the United Methodist Church, making disciples so that the world might be transformed. And Jesus is here saying, I wish the distractions of this world would be burned away so that my baptism, one that ushers in the kingdom of God in its purest form, might be complete. Even the distractions that go down to our most basic order-sustaining needs of family. Jesus has in mind to burn every distraction that would come between us and God. And if he's willing to let those divisions come in our families and those most important relationships, if he's willing to bring those divisions that would free us for joyful obedience to God, how much more is Jesus willing to burn away our political divisions, our partisan divisions in this country, in this world? How much more is Jesus willing to burn away the things that separate us on socioeconomic levels? How much more is Jesus willing to burn away the distractions that separate us based on one skin tone being more important than another skin tone? How much more is Jesus willing to burn away the things that divide us in this denomination and in this church worldwide? Jesus is coming to set fire. He's coming to set fire to the things that would distract us from the most important thing in this world, which is God's kingdom. And so my prayer, and I hope that you join me in this morning, is for God to burn it down. Burn down every distraction, God. Burn down everything that would distract us from your kingdom in this world. Amen. Our closing hymn is on page 130. God will take care of you. Page 130, please stand. Amen. Uh -huh.
before I, I give the benediction, I just want you to know that this is the most fire and brimstone passage that I've ever preached on, and it is not my general mood. You will not hear sermons asking God to burn it down very often for me. <laughs> but hopefully we did that in the best way possible, that God would come and burn down the distractions that would separate us from God and us from our neighbors, from the love of God and neighbor. And so I ask you to pray with me, God, burn it down, burn it down for us. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen.